Hello and welcome to today's edition of Charting the Markets. With me, Sean Murison, Senior Market Analyst at IG South Africa. Uh, on today's economic calendar, all the data seems to be coming out of the US this afternoon. That's in the form of weekly unemployment claims, uh, which is probably the most significant of the data points today, followed by Philly manufacturing data, index data, um, as well as we do have some testimonies from Secretary, uh, Treasur Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and um, FOMC members later this afternoon. Let's look at some charts now and starting off with the US dollar. So US dollar basket has traded quite nicely to that low that we were talking about previously, that 100.50 mark. Um, we've had a nice bullish price reversal at that mark, we have this, uh, where my mouse point is right now, uh, below this dotted trend line. And that's from oversold territory. We are seeing a rebound. Now, if you've been following the commentary in weeks preceding, uh, we're still keeping a negative, uh, a, a short bias to trades on the dollar index in lieu of that longer term trend, which we still deem to be down. But we do recognize the fact that we have hit a low and we are rebounding currently from oversold uh, levels. So what we're doing now is we're waiting for to see where that rebound ends. And we're looking for a bearish price reversal at one of our levels here. And any of these major highs before trend line support, uh, before we'll be looking for short entry once again. So we're not looking at trading the rebound or looking to get long into the rebound. Uh, we'll be waiting to see where it finishes up. Alternatively, if we do see the price, you know, this rebound starting to fail now and close below that 1.101.20 mark, then we'll be looking at a short entry again, targeting a retest of this low at 100.50. Um, still quite a way to go before we start changing our longer term bias to trades on that. We need to see us taking out this high at 105.30, which is quite quite far away, obviously, at this point in time. And we do have that 200-day simple moving average, um, that blue line on our chart, sitting just above that, about 105.80 odd. So looking to short into any type of rebound, waiting for that rebound to end with a bearish price reversal, or alternatively seeing this current rebound fail and a close below 101.2 naught before looking for short entry once again. So it's a bit of a waiting game right now, uh, but that is our view on the US dollar. Moving over to the Euro uh, USD, at this point in time, that longer term trend is still up. So obviously favoring Euro strength, uh, dollar weakness. Now we are starting to retrace there from overbought territory for what was overbought territory. And then level of support there is 1.0855. So that top was realized with this bearish engulfing type candle pattern here. And we have seen a move lower and we have a bit of a consolidation forming but certainly the level of support to watch there is 1.0855. What we want to do is we want to see that price moving towards that level, just ticking back with a nice bullish price reversal. We had a line graph on there, it would just manifest as a price moving lower and then just ticking back. Now, if we do break that level, still wouldn't be looking at shorting. We'd be looking at a move towards this next level of support, that dotted trend line, and waiting for a reversal of that, or just before that for long entry again. With the view of retargeting a move towards 1.1070, and that being the recent high, and if we do start getting through that, start targeting 1.1180. With all these charts, we recognize there is a potential for you know short-term volatility to increase and dollar to strengthen that, but we're trading the charts as we see them, and we're backing the trends up until some signs that those trends are changing direction. At the moment, what we are doing is we're seeing bits of pullbacks from underlying trends uh, not yet a trend reversal, and certainly far away from that at this point. Uh, looking at cable, pound versus the US dollar. Uh, longer term trend is still up, uh, although we do have a short term range now, but sitting between 1.2343, and the resistance now is about 1.25265 odd. We have had a bullish reversal off the support level right now, and that is targeting a move back towards that one point. Uh, 25265 odd level here, this red line. So I haven't labeled that at this point in time. I think we are long on that sh very short term trade. Might want to have a stop loss and a close below this 1.2343 mark. Uh, but certainly, longer term trend is still considered up, short term consolidation. It's a range, uh, range trade consideration, and we're keeping that bias even with the range trade in line with that longer term uptrend. So you're looking for longs there, and that certainly is a bullish reversal off support and we're targeting that resistance level there. Moving over to some indices now, and starting off with the NASDAQ 100. Now that longer term trend is still considered up. We do have that 20-day, uh, 50-day uh, simple moving average, green line, still trading firmly above that 200-day simple moving average, our blue line, 
We had that golden cross there, which is suggesting of a long-term bullish bias to uh, to the trend on the NASDAQ 100. In the short term, we do have a bit of a range-bound environment, though. And last week, we were looking at bullish reversal of support, targeting a move towards resistance at 13,100. Hard one to trade because of that bullish engulfing being so big if you're waiting for a close there, but it's still relevant. We did touch that level there, and now we are retracing back. So we're looking to see where this retracement ends. Um, if we see a bullish reversal of 12,900, we'd be happy to get long there, targeting a retest of that 13,190. If we break below that level, we'd be waiting uh, for a bullish reversal at one of our lower levels of support, either 12,610 or towards trend line support there uh, before uh, looking for long entry once again. So longer term trend up, keeping with that bias, although recognizing the fact that we are in a short term pullback within that longer term trend. S&P 500, similar picture. Now this one's a little bit, it's quite interesting. We had this range bound environment and we had a bit of a false break there. About two points. We I like to look at closes above. We did get a close above there. That did not work out in terms of manifesting to see us test this 4,195 level. And we are now retracing or from overbought territory from there. So um, how we view it that, or how I view it at this point in time is that this range bound environment has actually just been extended. And we can actually just broaden that range slightly there uh, to accommodate that that high there at 4,170. And so now we are still considered that longer term trend to be up, uh, but we're waiting for the price to continue to weaken and we're waiting for it to, that weakness to play out, looking for it to end with a bit of a price ticking back, a bullish type price reversal before looking for long entry again. And we would consider that uh, closer towards the support chart 4,070, um, and maybe even a bit more conservatively 4,080 to 4,085 odd. So at the moment, though, we are retracing, we are falling, and we are moving out of, over bought territory. But it's not the end of the world. It's not at this point a sign that the trend has changed direction. Moving over to Europe, and looking at that Germany 40 or the DAX 40, longer term trend still clearly, clearly up. Um, but same principle applies. We're having a bit of a pullback from overbought territory at this point in time. We have already started to test support, which was previously resistance. And one of our targets from previous uh, the previous weeks, 15,715. Uh, we want to see how the price settles. Yeah, we could just move into a sideways range bound environment, but we still uh, we want to see the price either ticking off there. If it breaks there, we're looking for a bullish reversal closer towards that 15,485 mark uh, for long entry. With that 16,300 level, the longer term upside target on the DAX 40. FTSE 100, and we've argued that this could be more of a range bound, a large range bound price environment here for the FTSE as we broke below that 200 day a simple moving average. We're not really making higher highs or higher lows. In the short term, we are. The short term, short to medium term bias is to the upside. And we're also sitting in overboard territory here. Now we've got this bearish engulfing candle pattern. We look at this red candle relative to this green candle here, marking a short term top. Um, and an overbought territory. Now, if I was looking for short entry, my preference here would be to see a close below that 7,870 mark. If we do get that, then I'd start targeting a move towards 7,700, possibly using that reversal high, um, sitting about 7,920 as a stop loss indication for the trade. We'd also use that as a breakout level. Uh, if we do get some traction here on the upside, seeing a close above that, to target a move back towards that high about 8,040 on the FTSE 100. Moving over to some commodities now and um, starting off with Brent crude. Now, a longer term trend bias for Brent crude has been considered down for quite some time, although we said in the short to medium term, a bit of a range bound price environment. Now, very short term, we had this gray shaded area here. We said, oh, we're either waiting for a break on the downside, let's look for short entry, or in the event of a move higher, We'd wait for that to play out, provided it doesn't take out this high at 88.70, we'd be looking for a reversal for short entry as well. So we're either waiting on the break to end with a bearish price reversal or a downside break. We've got the upside situation, we broke out, and then we've had a bit of a, uh, not as a clear cut reversal, but that has played out. The price is trading towards now uh, one of our support targets at 80.80, which is quite an initial target would be 83.35, uh, we're looking at 80.80. 
Now, if you are fortunate enough to have caught this, you might want to be trailing that stop loss now as we've had quite a significant move lower, lower one or two, uh, above a one or two day high. Um, it's as we search for 80, 80 and possibly 79, 50. And we start breaking below that, then we start looking at these lower levels and perhaps some significant downside from there. But that being said, uh, we want to keep it fairly tight stop loss if you are short there, because we are sitting quite deep into oversold territory. And that means we could have a bit of a rebound. Now, we wouldn't be looking at long, in, be getting long into a rebound for the fact that we consider that longer term trend to be down on Brent crude. Now, gold. Gold, the momentum on the upside has started to fail a little bit in the short term. So it's been conforming quite nicely. We've been keeping a long bias to trades as that longer term trend has been up. We had this consolidation. We had a breakout in the right direction. We've had a pullback and then we had a takeout of this high. Not quite our channel resistance target of 2007. So we hit a high just short of 2050. And then we have started to retrace. Now, 1980 is acting as a level of support. It does seem to be holding at this point in time. Longer term trend is still up. Um, but we could be moving into a bit of a broad, uh, sort of a short-term sideways consolidation here. Again, still keeping a long bias to trades. I think we had a nice intraday reversal, this red candle, this hammer type candle, um, as a test of this 1,980 level. I think to get long there, you may want to see a strong close. You want to see the price closing above um, this high here, about 2,000 and, $2,005 an ounce before targeting a move back to 2050. If we do get that situation, and looking at a stop loss on a close below that 1980. Now, in the event we don't get that strong close, we start moving sideways, we do break below that 1980. Again, wouldn't be looking at shorting, we're waiting to see where that weakness played out to. Our next level of support considered there at about 1945. But we are looking not to short gold at this point in time, we're keeping a long bias, uh, we're just identifying where those entry points could be, and that one would be. Strong close, or well, close about 2005, about $2,005 an ounce, or in the event that we do break down, waiting for a reversal at one of our lower levels for long entry. This provided it doesn't go too deep and take us below this uh, channel support. Last but not least, uh, copper. Now, this one, uh, last week we said well, we had a bit of a flag breakout pullback and looked like it was getting going again. We weren't convinced on the momentum, but we're still backing that upside. It is looking like it's failing at this point in time. That momentum has been lost a little bit. We've struggled to break that high. We had a bit of an intraday break, but we are now correcting off of that. Uh, copper seen as a leading e uh, indicator of economic health, uh, suggesting it's you know the, the sentiment is waning, uh, certainly in the short term. And obviously, copper being relevant to underlying shares that do mine copper, there's a number of them, uh, likes of Glencore, BHP, Anglos. Uh, Rio's just to name but a few. Um, we think that now, I think that this momentum has been lost. I think we are grinding a little bit and maybe moving into a bit more of a range bound uh, trading environment for copper. A short term range considered between $8,670 per metric ton and possibly that high of $9,185 per metric ton. Right, that's all the charts from me, Sean Murison, Senior Market Analyst at IG South Africa. Do watch out for this afternoon's weekly unemployment claims data, that fully fed manufacturing data, existing home sales, as well as commentary from Janet Yellen. That's all this afternoon.